To those of you who have pondered the efficiency gap, wondering how the results are tabulated, this video is for you. If you've already done calculations, even deep calculations, this video will help save you time and give a greater understanding of the numbers. The examples are designed so that even someone who has just started using Excel can set up their own spreadsheet. To answer the lingering question on everyone's mind, yes, there is a second way of calculating the efficiency gap, and it makes the process simpler. Here are the two methods for calculating the efficiency gap. The first method uses wasted votes, and the second method uses a seats votes equation. Seats votes equations have been around for decades and are commonly of this form where there is a percentage of seats minus 50% and a percentage of votes minus 50%. We will use the seats votes equation first to calculate the efficiency gap and then use the wasted votes method to confirm our answer. By the way, the example we will use is a scaled down version of the 2012 Pennsylvania congressional election results from Ballotpedia. Here is a state of eight districts where three Democrats and five Republicans have been elected. We show the Republican, Democrat, and total votes in each district. From these, we weight each district by its total votes. We need these numbers to weight the seats and to get a total weighted seat count, which is used in the seats votes equation. But let's run through it one step at a time. Please pause if you need to absorb a formula. Starting with each district's total votes, we calculate a district average of 35.38. Using this number, we weight each district by its turnout. This is done by dividing each district's total by the average. Districts with more votes than average will have a value of greater than one, and districts with fewer votes than average will have a value of less than one. This district with 39 votes has 10% more votes than average, so its weighting is 1.10. Since this seat was won by a Democrat, we move it to the next column. Democratic numbers are used in almost all literature, so we will stick to this norm. Typically, a seat is given a value of 1. If Democrats win 3 seats as they have done here, the seat total would be 3. The seats won by Democrats here are mostly from lower turnout districts, so the total number of weighted Democratic seats is less than 3, 2.91 in this case. The percentage of wasted seats is simply 2.91 divided by the total number of seats, 8 giving the Democrats a seat share of 36%. Next, the total votes for Democratic candidates divided by the total statewide votes gives a 50.5% vote share. Plugging these seats and votes percentages into the equation gives an efficiency gap of 14.66, which is a very high number and it indicates gerrymandering. Let's check our numbers by calculating the efficiency gap using wasted votes. Again, we have Republican, Democrat, and total votes. We also have Republican, Democrat, and total wasted votes. To calculate the Republican wasted votes, we have the Microsoft Excel formula, where if the Republican candidate wins the district, the wasted votes are the difference between the Democrat and Republican votes divided by two. If the Republican candidate loses the district, all of the Republican votes are wasted. This formula is similar for Democratic wasted votes. The total wasted votes is simply the difference between the two. Here we have it set up so a positive efficiency gap means that Republicans have gerrymandered. But the sign of the number varies from paper to paper. There is no standard, so be very careful in this step. From here, the efficiency gap is simply the total wasted votes as a percentage of the total votes. And the efficiency gap of 14.66 matches our other result. So here is the kicker. Yes, both of these methods give the exact same result, but the fact that the efficiency gap can be written as a seats votes equation has legal implications. The seats votes equation implies that a party is entitled to a certain percentage of legislative seats given a certain percentage of statewide votes. If these percentages do not match up proportionately, the efficiency gap will return a large number indicating gerrymandering. So the efficiency gap becomes a measure of proportional representation and the courts have made it clear that proportional representation is not guaranteed. So it is likely that the efficiency gap will no longer be allowed as part of a legal argument. And that is not all I need to throw another wrench into the gears. We have been calculating the efficiency gap wrong. Even using the wasted votes method is wrong. We are not off by much, but the error gets worse the more unequal the voter turnout is between districts. It turns out that when we weighted the seats, it introduced errors. When a seat with a higher weight flips from Democrat to Republican or vice versa, 
it affects the results more than when a seat with a lower weight flips. So the results become skewed towards districts with higher voter turnout. This does not make sense. Also, it turns out that by adding up each district's vote total to get a statewide total, the higher turnout districts again skew the final results. When districts are relatively even in voter turnout, as is the case here, the error will not be all that great, but as variations in voter turnout increase, the error increases. As a bonus, by correcting this error, we come up with the easiest method to compute the efficiency gap, the equal districts efficiency gap seats votes method. Okay, blank slate here. We're starting from scratch. I just need 15 seconds here. First, we calculate the percentage of the Democratic vote in each district. The average of these percentages is 50.9. Democrats won three of the eight seats, so their seat percentage is 37.5. And that is it. That's all we need to compute. We just plug these numbers into the seats votes equation to come up with the efficiency gap of 14.35. Simple, easy, and to the point. I call this the equal districts efficiency gap. Again, there is not a huge difference between the results here, but as stated, the more variable the voter turnout, the less accurate the wasted votes method becomes. If you would like more information as to how these equations were derived, please read the second half of my paper listed in the video description. These equations and their ramifications are discussed more deeply there. Using these equations has made calculating the efficiency gap much easier for me, and I hope the same is true for you.